So as we had the championship playoff final yesterday and the playoff hero was Joe Bryan, the fullback, I thought that now would be a better time than ever to rank every championship fullback from this season. So congratulations to Fulham on their promotion to the Premier League. It took a while for that game to get going, but eventually in extra time, Joe Bryan was the hero. The categories we'll be putting these fullbacks into are poor, average, solid, very good, and elite. So fullbacks from your club, where would you place them into that tier list? And just before you head into today's video, a big shout out to One Football for sponsoring today's video. If you've not already, go and check it out in the top line or the description down below. Over on the One Football app, they've gone ahead and redesigned it over the summer, so it's looking really fresh now. But if you want to get live updates, give with all the recent goals when they do go in heading into the new season if you want to get transfer news and speculation around your club and you guys know me it's also really handy to keep up to date with all the latest stats as well you can look at individual players from your club and check out how they've done this season Darnell Fisher as we can see here I'll be ranking him on today's video so like I said guys one football in the description down below really handy up to have but if you do guys enjoy today's video guys make sure to leave a like and without any further ado let's hop into this one and so we may as well start out with the playoff hero Joe Bryan I mean he's had some seasons to say the least for Fulham. Three goals, seven assists, a fantastic return as a fullback. Probably one of the best attacking fullbacks in the league. Got a great link up with Mitrovic. I've liked Joe Brown for quite a while now, since his days at Bristol City when they were in League One. And maybe a couple times at the start of the season, defensively, I wasn't all too sure about him. But the second half of this season and going forward, there's no question in his ability. And in the playoff final, I mean, great invention for the free kick to catch David Rea out. And then the run for the second goal as well. Absolutely fantastic that he's still got that in his tank in extra time. I and mean, if you're scoring two goals in the playoff final, you're going into the top tier aren't you? Henrik Dalsgaard up next for Brentford, he also scored in the playoff final although that turned out to be a bit more of a consolation goal, what has been so impressive with Brentford throughout the season has been their defensive record only second to Leeds with conceding goals this season. Defensively very capable I think that this season as well he's come on leaps and bounds and has turned out to be one of their more underrated players over the year so for Dalsgaard I'd put him into very good. Elliot Bennett at Blackburn Rovers, not the best fullback at the club there but he's you know he's transitioned from a winger into a fullback as the captain there a good leader on and off the pitch I think that He's a good player to have in and around the dressing room. And like I say, not the best fullback at the club, but I'd still throw him into the solid category. Moses Odebadjo at Sheffield Wednesday. I used to really rate Odebadjo from his time at Brentford, but this season for Wednesday, I don't think he's been particularly great. If you want a penalty in and around the box, go on a 1v1 situation with Odebadjo. He gave two penalties away in our game against Sheffield Wednesday earlier on this season. I think there's probably just been one too many lackadaisical performances. I'm going to throw him into average. Donald Fisher for Preston North End. I mean, the guy loves the yellow cards. 11 yellow cards this season for Fisher which is a little bit mental but overall I do rate him very highly as a fullback in the championship I think both defensively and going forward he offers quite a bit to this north end side whose other fullbacks are a little bit more limited with going forward I'd say I remember when we initially signed Fisher the Rotherham fans didn't give rave reviews about him but overall he's been a really good servant for us so far add them into the very good category if not pushing on for that elite tier Jack Hunt for Bristol City similar to Elliot Bennett not the best fullback at the club there but can offer something I think going forward has had a few moments where he's looked quite good this season in terms of of crosses coming into the box. Definitely better as I'd probably say a wing back opposed to a full back. Defensively can get caught out a couple of times. I'd throw him into, the, into that solid category as well. Lee Wallace at QPR. Don't think he's had the greatest of years. He's been in and out of the squad with injuries. When he has featured he's not really blown me away. He came in on a free transfer and he is 33 years old. He came over from Scotland so we weren't really expecting the world from this one to be honest. But I think I'm going to throw him into the poor category. He's not really put for me this season. Andy Hughes for North End. I think he's a steady player. I think that going forward to Sometimes he is a little bit limited in terms of making those overlapping runs and getting crosses into the box. But defensively, I think he's all right. You know, he's not too bad at standing up to wingers in those 1v1 situations. For Andy Hughes, I'd probably throw him into that solid category. Luke Ayling for Leeds United. Now, a lot of questions are being asked of this Leeds squad at the moment. You know, which of the players who are going to be able to make that step up to the Premier League? Luke Ayling is one of those players I rate very highly. I think that this season has been one of the outstanding fullbacks in the league, both defensively and going forward. You know, uh, fullbacks in the Bielsa system are required for quite a few roles actually and Luke Ayling stepped up to the mark this season that fantastic goal he scored at Huddersfield as well. Luke Ayling this season I think goes into that elite tier he's got to. Stephen Kingsley didn't really work out for him at Hull this season he's now a free agent once again struggled with injuries I'm probably going to throw him into that poor category with Wallace just didn't happen for him this year. Ryan the Ambi at Blackburn Rovers I do think he's come on leaps and bounds this season I think that Blackburn have had a few of their youngsters really stepping up to the mark this season and going forward into the future Ryan the Ambi could be sculpted into something quite special. For him this season, I'm, I'm going to throw him into that very good category. I think that he's gone under the radar a little bit. James Bree, who's been at Luton on loan from Aston Villa, I didn't particularly rate a lot at the start of the season, but since Nathan Jones has come in, actually put in a string of really good performances towards the end of the season. I've thrown him into the average category there, but I think that if you're basing this off the end of the season since lockdown, you could probably push him up a, 
play a category or two. Stephen Ward, this was his last season at Stoke. He's at 34 years old. I think the pace of the championship just caught up to him, really. He was just a little bit too slow to react to certain situations. This season, been quite poor. Todd Kane for QPR. He's all right at this level. He's steady while never blowing me away. I'd probably throw him into that average category as well. Molin Rubio for Millwall. I think he's improved massively this season, especially since the introduction of Gary Rowett. I think that he's played almost every game this season. 43 appearances. Millwall have been brilliant at the back this season. I think a lot of praise is given to their back three, but Romeo at right back has been fantastic. Great pace, good positional awareness. I'm going to throw him into that very good category. I think he's improved a lot this year. Judge Friend missed quite a chunk of the season through injury this season, but I still think he's a solid performer at this level when he is in that Borough squad. I think they're better with him than without. He's got experience and leadership at the back. I'd throw him into that solid category. Anthony Robinson at Wigan Athletic. It's clear to see why there is interest from so many big clubs. I mean, AC Milan wanted him in January, and then since then, there's been a whole host of Premier League clubs who are interested this summer. He's assured both defensively and going forward. An average match rating of 7.09 that puts him as one of the best consistent fullbacks in the league this season. I throw him into that top tier. I think he's that good. He's ready to make that step up to the next level as well. Greg Cunningham. Oh, the guy just can't catch a break, can he? He's been out on loan at Blackburn for the first half of this season up until he got injured. Plays for Cardiff as well. I think Greg Cunningham is one of the most, if not the most consistent left backs in the league actually. It's just a question of can he stay fit because he's been so unlucky with injuries over the past few years. Years. At Blackburn, I think he was starting to rekindle his form that he showed at Preston North End and was getting back to his best. Then he hit another brick wall and got injured. For Cunningham, though, when he's at his best, I think he's very good for this level. Jay Bidwell at Swansea, they picked him up on the free from QPR. I think that he's done the right this season. At the start of the year, I wasn't all too sure about him, but since they've moved to this wing back system, that suited him a little bit more, giving them a bit more freedom to get forward. I'd throw him into that solid tier. Eric Lehigh at Hull City. Now, not what he once was, but I think that when he did leave, I think that's Hull really found out what they were lacking in defence, you know, in terms of leadership and on the pitch. Hull were a much better team with Lehigh in than without him. These days, he's between solid and average, I'd say. Pick, you take your pick between those two. Jaden Bogle at Derby, this was one where I wasn't all too sure where to place him. Based off last season, I would have put him in the league. I thought he was brilliant last season. Two goals, nine assists, one of the best attacking fullbacks in the league. And I think that at the start of this season, when he was fit again, he started to rekindle that form. Brilliant attacking outlet down that right-hand side, making those overlapping runs but over the course of the full season, I think he's been a little bit more inconsistent this time around. Obviously, he's had a couple more mistakes leading to goals. That one, the Forest, being the most notable. I'd probably drop him down the category this season. I'd still put him into that very good tier, but I just don't think he's quite at that elite standard that he was last time around. Speaking of elite, though, it's his Forest counterpart, Matty Cash, who I am going to be throwing into that top category. I mean, understandably so, there's been a lot of Premier League interest in Matty Cash. There's been a few bids that have already come in from Sheffield United, Burnley, stiffing around Southampton as well. There's obviously a lot of interest in him because of how well he's done this season. Three goals, five assists from fullback. Statistically, this season, only Luke Ayling has had a higher match rating for a right back this season, Matty Cash being 7.2, which is ridiculously consistent. I think that in some of the games where he wasn't featured towards the end of the season, you, they really like that presence overlapping down the right. Christian Pedersen at Birmingham, I think he's had two really good years there, and there's quite a lot to like about a player like Pedersen, good defensively and going forward as well. Scored four goals and got two assists this season. I think he's also decent in the air. He's played a couple of matches at centre-half for Birmingham this year, and although he didn't end the season, but particularly great, like the vast majority of Birmingham players really, I still think there's a very good player there and I'll throw him into that category. The same could be said for Maxine Collin as well, probably didn't have the best end of the season, but I think that when both Collin and Pedersen are on it, Birmingham have got one of the best pair of fullbacks in the league for me. Under the right manager and we'll see how Karanke gets on, I think that those two could be utilised really well. Tommy Smith at Stoke City, oh, a tough one to judge this season because players at Stoke have either been awful or brilliant with their performances and there's been like no in between. The one mistake that a lot of people will go back to this season season was the penalty he gave away at Leeds. Stupid mistake, but since making that mistake, actually ended the season quite well for Stoke, I thought. He was highly rated from his time at Huddersfield. He's been a bit hit and miss this season. I'll throw him into the solid tier. I think there's more to come from him next season, perhaps. Clark Adolfo Barnes, he's done fairly well in the second half of this season. I mean, he scored the goal to keep them up in the championship, and for that, you've got to throw him at least in the solid tier. Chris Sully at Charlton. Throughout the year, he's been a really good player for Charlton. This season in the championship, probably throw him into that average category. I'm interested to see where he ends up next. I'd probably say League One's more his level at this stage. Nathan Byrne at Wigan ended the season very strong, nominated for the Player of the Month for July. He got one goal and seven assists. I think it's a cross from the ball. One of the best for delivering those balls into the box as a fullback this season. I think probably is a bit more suited to playing as a wing back. He was brilliant from his time at Swindon playing that role. At the start of the season, defensively, I wasn't completely sold on him, but he ended the season really well. I've thrown him into that solid category, but basing it off the second half of this season, you could probably bump him up a tier. Drew Bennett at Cardiff, I like quite a bit, actually. I've thrown him into that very 
very good category. I think he's one of the most competitive fullbacks in the league. Carly from Neil Harris have had a fantastic defensive record. I think that Burnett's done well. Dan Potts, similar to James Bree at the start of the season, wasn't completely sold on him, but ended the season under Nathan Jones quite strong and putting in a string of decent defensive performances. I have thrown him into the average table, but towards the end, you could bump him up maybe. Jada Silver at Bristol City I think there is a lot to like about this player quite a dynamic fullback. I think that if he gets next season if he's fully fit for the entirety of it we really could see quite a special season here you know he's been in and out of Bristol City side this season with injuries but whenever he has featured I've been very impressed. Can either play as a wing back or at fullback. I've thought him into very good I think that Bristol City fans know the player they've got on their hands there. Rico Henry at Brentford I think there's going to be quite a bit of interest in the summer. One of the best attacking fullbacks in the league. I think that his link up with Ben Rama this season has been excellent when Ben Rama drifts into those central positions a lot of time out on that left hand side it is Rico Henry who provides the width really pacey fullback as well gets back and forth constantly throughout the 90 minutes I think West Ham have already been linked I'd throw him into that elite category I think he could take that step further and the Adam at Reading they got an absolute bargain for this one they picked up another three a couple of years ago but what a player he's been since then ever the dependent at fullback one goal and four assists this season goes under the radar a little bit for me I'd throw him into that very good tier Harry Toffolo arrived at Huddersfield in January and since then their defensive record they certainly tightened things up for from the start of the season. I think he's had a good solid season for them. I'm going to put him into that middle solid category. Teddy Simpson, who's now a free agent, he did well initially at Huddersfield, showed things up at the back, but towards the end of the season did start to tail off a little bit. I'd probably say these days, between, he's another one of those who's probably between solid and average. Donald Furlong, who arrived at West Brom this summer, I'd say he's had a good season for West Brom overall. I think that in terms of an attacking fullback, someone who's happy to get forward and provide that width has been a good option for West Brom this season. I wasn't all too sure how he'd do making that move from Q but I've been impressed this season. I'd probably throw him into that very good, good category along with O'Shea as well. It's just sort of within them two at right back this season, battling it out, hasn't it? Dion Sanderson, who spent the second half of this season out on loan at Cardiff from Wolves, I think it's been a nice addition to that squad. He did have that one dodgy game against Fulham where he gave away the penalty, but apart from that, overall, I think he's been solid. Looked good when Cardiff came to Deepdale. I'd throw him into that solid category. Stuart Dallas for Leeds United. I mean, he's played every position under the sun for Leeds, hasn't he? I wouldn't at all be surprised if he ends up in net in the Premier League at some point, but when we're talking about players who could potentially make that step up to the Premier League for Leeds, I think that Stuart Dallas is going to be one person who's not going to have any issues with that. I mean, his work ethic is second to none. He's sort of like the James Milner of the Championship, isn't he? He plays absolutely everywhere, gives it his all. I think there's even a shout for him being one of Leeds' most consistent players this season, actually. Like I mentioned before when we were talking about Luke Ayling, it's no easy feat to be a fullback in the Bielsa system, but he's transitioned excellently. I'd put him into that top tier. I think he's been brilliant. Then it's a doy at Fulham. I think he's been solid over the year. I think that in terms of defensive assurance, in that right back role isn't all too adventurous getting full but you know what you're going to get from a player like him has had a couple of dodgy moments here and there I remember he did get sent off the game that we had at Deepdale but overall I'd, put, I'd chuck him into that solid tier I've actually run out of space on the graphic here as we've gone through so many players but I will go through a few more players who I would put into these categories so Max Lowe another player who I'd probably throw into that solid category I think has had a good season with Dolby Preston North End were actually linked to him last summer I would really like to have got him on board but it's looking like his future is now at Derby Connor Roberts at Swansea City he probably in the solid tier but pushing on to very good I think he's really suited to playing as a wing back you know since the resumption of football and when Swansea have gone to this through at the back system similar to Bidwell as well but Roberts especially has really been thriving in that role. Morgan Fox this time around for Sheffield Wednesday there's quite a few clubs interested in him it's understandable to see why I think he had a solid season for Wednesday. Jed Spence from Middlesbrough it was a decent breakthrough year for him I think he's been fairly solid. Joe Rafferty I put into that solid tier as well had a really good season and has been quite underrated for North End this year. Can either play at right back or left back and has actually got a decent delivery on him from a set piece as well. In the very good category, I'd probably throw Ribeiro in there as well from Nottingham Forest. I think that he's always, he's been a player who's gone a little bit under the radar. You know, Matty Cash has got a lot of praise this season and although he did, his form definitely dipped since the resumption of football after lockdown. The first half of the season, or the first three quarters of it, I thought he was having a very good season, you know, full of commitment, passion and energy. Ryan Manning at QPR can either play at fullback or does play midfield as well but four goals and seven assists this season is a fantastic return. He scored one absolutely unbelievable goal uh, against Preston North End at Deepdale the last live game I got to watch that one I thought Ryan Manning into that very good category I do like Manning quite a bit and then Kieran Gibbs for West Brom it has come out that they are willing to let Kieran Gibbs go in this transfer window so he may be getting a move somewhere else I still think Gibbs is a very good player at this level it's just a question of keeping him fit but guys there we have it that will now wrap it up for today's video now I'm sure there's a bunch of fullbacks that I forgot because there's just so many in the championship so if there is anyone that we didn't mention in today's video and you want to get my opinion on them then comment them in the comments down below and I'll say which tier I would put them into. But apart from that guys, like I said, that will now wrap it up. So thank you so much for watching. If you did go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like and please do subscribe for some regular championship content. But apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.